This video is brought to you by Anti-Gravity Lithium-Ion Batteries, used by Monster Energy Star Racing Yamaha and Monster Energy Kawasaki and many more teams. And you can use the same battery as Eli Tomac, Jason Anderson, and others. Anti-Gravity Batteries offer more power and capacity than the competitors because they give you a larger lithium battery pack. But additionally, they offer features like the world's first batteries with built-in jump starting that will never leave you stranded. So check them out at antigravitybatteries.com. Hey y'all, what's up? I'm Chris Kiefer. Welcome to racerxonline.com for another test video here. And today's a special day for me. So a little backstory before we tell you what's going on here. Obviously we have the Stark Varg long awaited electric motorcycle that we've seen and heard about for many, many years, uh, especially over in Europe and uh, seeing a lot of guys like Sebastian Tortelli rise, racing it and riding it and testing it. Um, for me, uh, it's a little, little bit near and dear to my heart. I come from uh, an electric testing background a little bit with Alta when they were around. I was with Alta for about two and a half years. So um, working through the process into production, uh, spent a lot of time up in um, Northern California riding an electric motorcycle. So to see this beautiful machine here at Glen Helen Raceway today, I'm excited to ride it, break it down for you all right here. And I don't really want to compare it to the Alta because I think this is such a, a new machine and it's so updated. Uh, the Alta is more analogish looking than this unit right here, but um, I'll compare it to some gas model machines that I've ridden lately as well. Give you a little bit of background as what it feel, feels like to ride an electric machine. So it's pretty cool. This is when I first saw this, I didn't even know it was a phone because it looks like integrated into this pad. But yeah, there's modes. You go to your modes and you can actually go to your mode one. It'll show you exactly where you're at, mode two. And then you can actually change your modes and then save it. So that way you can do it when you're riding on the fly. You can change your modes in the air, in a, in a corner. It doesn't matter when you do it, you'll be able to feel it. But you can just drag this bar a um, little slower, a little faster. You have horsepower, you have uh, what we call, they call regenerative braking. But for us normal guys, it's called engine braking. You can turn that up or down. So we're gonna set our modes here and then save them and then we'll be able to ride them, which is pretty cool. So also for a little safety feature, you just don't want to turn this thing on and it's going to be up and moving and get away from you. So light blinking, we're in neutral. The dash shows that it's in neutral. To get out of neutral and get into your map one, push down and that'll get you in map one. And then you can go up map two, map three, map four, and map five, but it will not go past map five because that's what we have. We have five maps but it will not go to map one. You'll have to physically push the button, go back down if you want to go back down. Yeah, 50, 55, 50, 55, 70. But all the ends are breaking. up here at Glen Helen Raceway today with the Stark Varg. I brought the Nick Way with me because Steve Mathis was actually supposed to come, so Nick filled in for Pulp MX. Nick is the guy who's never ridden uh, an electric dirt bike before. I've, like I said on the intro of this thing, I've had two to three years on the Alta, so I kind of knew what I was getting myself into. 
But for me, just real quick, if I can get a little more techie for you guys, he's gonna give you the, the normal rundown, like how's it feel coming from a combustion engine motorcycle. This, if you, if you have ridden the Alta and you've ridden other electric bikes, this is like getting a brand new computer with all the bells and whistles and the bike itself, being an electric motorcycle, you hear a lot more things than a, a normal dirt bike, right? You have no engine noise. So coming from another electric bike, this is really quiet. Not a lot of plastic noise, not a lot of, uh, of engine or battery noise. Uh, and for me, uh, it was pleasantly uh, surprised going up these hills. Like I didn't feel anything that was slapping down or loose or clanky. It just, it feels really good as far as, um, it doesn't feel cheap. I guess that's a better word for it. It doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't have a, a lot of noise. You know, you're driving your old truck and you hear it rattling. It doesn't have any of that. Uh, what's really interesting to me, you have five modes. When I first went out on it early, uh, <laughs> we only were up to 60 uh, horsepower. And for me, that was plenty. And I went up to 70 and I felt like I broke loose a little bit on the rear end with the engine braking around 40 to 50. And I wanted a little bit of less engine braking because it does have a little bit of pitchiness um, in the air. So I went down to 35 and I like that engine braking feel. But for me, if you guys are hopping on this thing, 60 to 70 horsepower is plenty. So before I keep going on this, when I went all the way to 80, what's it like for you to ride coming from your Kawasaki, which you rode earlier today? Yeah, for me, it feels super light. Uh, it's not as responsive as like a combustion bike. I feel like it's on purpose to make it pretty smooth off the bottom, but then once it gets in the, the torque power is amazing. Like I hit every outside berm because that's what I'm here for. I'm really not worried about blowing my air filter out. And the thing has unbelievable torque power. So like pulling through the deep dirt is super fun. For me, it just makes me want to find a sand track and just blow some sand berms out because that would be like crazy fun for however long it would last. That would, that would be awesome. Generally, it's a lot to get used to, the lack of what the feeling would be engine brake entering the corners. But then in the air, I have the same feeling as you as where I was a little bit unsettled. Like yep. it would dive the front. So then I would be like modulating the throttle in the air. But then quickly, I realized that if I go wide open in the air, I could backflip. Right. Real quick. Real quick. <laughs> I could go, I could go Nick nonstop real quick with too much gas. Uh, it's very reactive to the throttle is what he's yeah. trying to say. Like if you're revving it in there like we do with our combustion engines, you hold it wide open, barsha this thing around the Glen Helen Raceway, you well loop out because it's very reactive. It'll snap back. So if you're low and you're starting to nosedive, you do the handy, you'll be out like a swordfish in the ocean and one blip of the throttle, so. Yeah, so that uh, was the biggest thing right. for me, noticing like just how I felt in the air on it. Obviously like taking off felt super normal, yep. but just how it reacted in the air was definitely different for me. But uh, I thought the suspension was super nice. I think generally speaking for me, even at my age in riding, I'm like trying to find something that's firm enough that has some compliance and it feels pretty firm. So that was like super nice for me, but I also, again, maybe because of the lack of engine braking, the, how the chassis is, lack of gyro, I don't know. It has a, has a nice feel because you end up feeling as if you're doing a lot of coasting because inherently how the engine is, you want to just get some, but she's so powerful, like obviously to ride it decent and without just the noise, you notice how much you actually are coasting while riding a track. Yep. So that feel was actually pretty comfortable. It just for me, getting used to what it would do in the air is the biggest thing. But again, it was, it was a lot of fun. I think for me, what modes were you on the most? I was, I rode three. Yep. which I think was at 55 horsepower, two and three, which 55 and then 60 horsepower. Yep. And then for me, that was probably the most usable power because I went to four and five and then I was riding behind a, a guy in a two-stroke that was riding pretty fast and I could close the gap quickly if I could gas it. But literally I would gas it and it would like pitch the back and I would go straight because it's yeah. so powerful. Yep. And then I would end up going too fast into the next corner, et cetera, et cetera. But it felt super comparable to a nice modified 450, I guess, in like mode three. And then mode two was definitely most comfortable as to where you could felt like you could ride it harder. But it, it definitely had a, you know, as you get up, it felt like more of an erratic, like throwing, throwing everything you could find at a bike to modify a 450. And then it just at that point, what, what's rideable? What about like just getting on it? You don't have a clutch. Uh, for me, when I ride an electric bike, and especially the Stark Varg, very light feeling like Nick was saying, when you going in a corner, even on paper, 255 pounds, it doesn't feel like that to me. It feels more like 230, 250F 
ish feeling in the corners. Really easy to lay in the corner. For me, I have a lots of front wheel feel, which is important to me. And just pivoting and getting out of a corner is really easy. Um, I'm used to not having a clutch lever because I've ridden these before, but what's that like? Yeah, for me, at my age, and really like I've, I went through the two stroke into four stroke into EFI, so I've like gone through all of these iterations of bikes that have these inherent problems. So I'm like a little bit pessimistic <laughs> as to how the bike's gonna perform, yep. like any bike. So uh, for me, where I'm 43 years old now and I'm like weighing out the like, does this make sense to really ride super hard? I would love to have some level of a clutch, yeah. like a safety thing, because again, I trust that the technology is there, but again, I trust myself better than taking somebody's word for it. So Correct. if this, as how fast it is, if, the, if it, she sticks wide open for any reason, I want to be able to stop it. Yep. Um, Never even thought about that. That's actually a good yeah, point. Yeah, that's, like... that's my biggest concern. To be completely honest with you, with with owning one of these or any e-bike as a whole, because I don't have any experience. Today's my first time riding an e-bike, but my sons grew up riding a Stasic, and they have the KTM E5. Right, you know, so you've been around it a little. So bit. I've been around it, so I I know that like it's they and they loved all that stuff. They still love the Stasic. Yeah. So I knew that like the power was going to be super fun, and it was going to be just fun to ride. But again, when you were talking this much horsepower, where even in mode two and three, we're comparable to you know, what's a stock and then a, a nice modified 450. Like we're talking some serious horsepower. And for me, I would just love to have the safety of having some level of clutch to where I can, I can control my own destiny. Just in case. In just in case. Right. Cause there's really, there is no need for it. Right. It's not like in, I, I'm used to stomping the brakes and being worried about it stalling, which I noticed myself like, oh, cause I get into a corner too fast cause it is quick. Yeah. I'd stomp the brakes and be like, oh, I'm going to stall. And then obviously it's an e-bike. It's not right. going to stall. But again, just for safety reasons, I really don't see any reason why I would need a clutch for performance. But again, I just, it's now, a lot of horsepower to not be able to stop. The great debate, obviously, you know, is combustion, electric, people freaking out on electric coming into our sport. Uh, I'm on the stance of there's room for it in our sport. Does it replace combustion for me? No. But do I have fun on this bike? Hell yes. Um, where do you stand on that? Yeah, and, and, I mean, and really, because I, I, we're both skewed yeah. because we ride for fun now. Yeah. And you do a good job with your racing and you have a good time with that. But for me, I like have a good time riding occasionally, but it's like my, uh, whether I'm working within the sport or I'm at the track with my sons. And so I'm a little bit skewed as to how I perceive the future to be with e-bikes or even the combustion bikes, because I want it to be as to where like rider error or the best man wins. And I did notice that riding behind a guy on a two stroke that was riding pretty quickly, I could ride probably all day at that guy's pace <laughs> because it's so easy. Yes. And so even like, that's kind of my problem with the modern day four strokes as well. Although, you know, it's a combustion engine and things happen. Generally they don't lately, which yeah. is awesome, which makes me feel better about my son's riding and the confidence of the engine performing as it needs to. But again, it's just, what are we doing making it too easy to where everyone can do the same thing i would like to see it be a little bit more of a rider sport not like the bike yeah um so i come into like a test like this with a little bit of a skewed opinion because i i would prefer it to stay as is yeah. but again i have a great time with this do i think there's a place for racing these as an as a, an amateur in the vet class or something absolutely Getting more people into the sport would be awesome, but I think it's also the same as the Surrounds I see riding around town. It's just, it's the same thing with me being concerned about not having a clutch. It's, it's, these are, these are numbers, horsepower numbers on this bike that are unheard of on a combustion bike that even the factory teams are not obtaining. Correct. And so, there's a level of danger. Factor. And so, who, who, who's yes. that for? Yeah. Who's that for? Correct. And, and, and then we talk about, hey, we got to get people in the sport and, and visit. Uh, our sport, we need more of that in, but you have this where you can ride this machine in a lot of areas you couldn't with the combustion bike. But for me, like Nick said, there's a lot of responsibility within this machine yeah. because you could get in, uh, in a dangerous spot in a hurry. So uh, for me, it's fun because it's different. We've been around this sport for so long. When I get to ride something that's different, I'm having a good time. Hence the reason sometimes I go back to two strokes. I'm like, oh yeah. Even though I don't like them, sometimes it's fun to ride because I'm on a four stroke all the time. So for me, there is room for these types of motorcycles in our sport. They are fun. 
I don't blame you if you want to buy one because for me, I would love to own one and mess around with my kid yep. um, at home. I mean, this is how Aiden grew up in the backyard on an, on an Osset trials bike. We made stuff in the backyard and that's how he learned how to ride safely. So for me, for sure, very fun. It's a quality product. And I guess I want to say some facts about this, this thing. Very easy to use interface. You got the phone laid up here. For me, I'm older, you know, get off my lawn. I don't know a lot of things about uh, technology, but easy for me to use. I'm 47 years old and I manage my way around it. I end up, uh, one of the times I was up there, the bike quit and uh, I managed to find my way around the interface, got it back up and moving and we figured it out and we're good to go. So not that difficult for you guys out there that I worried about, oh, it's electric technology. I won't be able to figure it out. You're fine, trust me, I'm an idiot and I figured it out just fine. Uh, to go off what Nick said real quick, chassis compared to Alta, uh, better performance, more bump absorption. It is a firmer feeling. I do think that when you have a 255 pound weight, some of the engineers think, or the suspension techs, hey, we need to beef up the springs. I'm more on the side, it doesn't feel that way on the track. We need to lighten the valving a little bit and maybe drop the spring rate. So if it was me, I would make the suspension move a little bit more and get a little bit more plushness. Obviously we're out here at Glen Helen Raceway, very fast, lots of hills. Um, concerning heat and time on the bike, I could probably go about 32 minutes on this bike. Heat isn't an is issue as it was on the Alta. Um, they have a lot of different aspects within this uh, battery. It's liquid cooled. You can cool it down. You can come over here and touch the outside. You're not going to get burned. So if you have children, you don't have to worry about that. So it's more of a quality product. As with anything tech based, it's going to get better as it goes. This is just what we're seeing with the Stark. They have a lot of new features that's coming out that makes it easier for you guys to adjust and make it easier for you to even ride more than Nick even wants. <laughs> So for you guys out there who are concerned about, hey, $14,000, it's a lot of money. They make a 60 horsepower one that's $1,000 less. So that's 13 grand. If you're getting a factory edition motorcycle, you're spending about that much anyway. So depending on what you want and how you want to ride, this is a viable option for you guys out there. Now, for me, I want to ride longer than 30 minutes and hang out. Yeah, know? but another cool feature as, as well is like adjusting it back is although it's it's you can be what's maybe not obtainable to ride it to its potential with the horsepower. The other cool thing is you could you could go in the interface and set it to where it's 10 horsepower. Right. And then we could send our wives out there and they we'd feel fine about it. They could ride down to the start with so the So at that point it's like it's a very right. It's a very adjustable bike so you could have one bike and be comparable to a super mini, a 125, a 250, a 450. So you have basically all of that, that, that range within one bike. A very universal. Yeah. So, yeah. At, so at, at that point, like, I would think it would be cool to introduce people to the sport by having it that way. But again, I asked, how could you set the parameters to where you don't accidentally put it in 80? So then you set all five modes into 10 horsepower, whatever it is, in case anybody touches something, it's never going to be into a mode in which it's going to get away from them, which is a very cool feature. Yeah, and I think some of the things that we don't know, we didn't sit here and lay out with Stark everything they can do to this thing. I'm sure they can lock the maps so no one could get into it. I'm sure there's a passcode where, just like your phone, you can lock a map and no one could get into that thing. So yep. there's things that I didn't get the 100% details on, but I'm sure that is there. If not, I'm sure it's coming. So you can go visit them. Um, you visit the website, Stark Official. Um, very cool to have this bike out here at Glen Helen Raceway. Um, I rode the Alta here when we were developing some stuff, so to compare it and, and to ride both at within a five year span is, is pretty cool. I still have an Alta at home and uh, look forward to having this bike at home and maybe do some comparison and get some more um, durability aspects for you guys out there. So I know these are starting to arrive in dealerships in December and most of you guys on your pre-orders are getting them now. So uh, stay tuned, hopefully in 2024 we'll have one for a long-term test and uh, as always, chris at keeferinktesting.com is my email. My door is open for you guys. If you have questions about this, something that me or Nick have missed, I'm happy to help you guys out. And of course, racerxonline.com for more information. And don't forget about our publication, 12 issues, $30. You still read magazine? Yeah. I'm, I'm all about the print. Yeah. But don't at me. Yeah. No, don't he, at me. His door is not open. Yeah, it's not open. I'm <laughs> good. Don't at me. See you guys in the next one. <laughs>